Along the road to Kherson, burned out vehicles and roadblocks manned by Russian troops. A major city in southern Ukraine, Kherson, fell in early March at the start of the war. While fighting was brief, residents have since protested against the Russian invasion. Among the first group of journalists allowed into the city, Russian forces have organized a tour. Their goal to show that life has returned to normal. The first stop, a water testing center. Why is it important for you that we're here? I was told to give a tour, so we are giving you a tour. Here is where we stock things. There is a dryer there. Next up, a bus depot, with the goal of showing that half of the city's bus lines are up and running again. As guests of the Russian army, speaking to locals is off limits. But away from the Russian guides, a bus driver has agreed to answer questions. No, I'm not scared. What do I risk? If they kill me, they kill me. The driver explains that so far Russian soldiers have treated her well, but she wants them to leave. I am for Ukrainian rule. I live in Ukraine. I am Ukrainian. I live on my land and I want Kherson to be free. I want things to be like before, before we lived peacefully. While Ukrainian flags still appear outside residences and private homes, it's the Russian flag that flies from government buildings. Initially, the Russian army said that they were not annexing the region. But now that stance has changed. We are an entity, the Kherson region, and we're entering the Russian Federation as an independent region of the Federation. The front line is just some 30 kilometers away, and the Russian army, which controls the city and most of the Kherson region, is on guard, digging trenches. For the region is a strategic one, as it bridges Crimea in the south and the Donbass in the east. Its wealth comes from agriculture in the Dnipro River, which provides fresh water to the area. As soon as Russia took control, they rerouted some of that water to Crimea, after eight years of dam closures.